All right, first play of the game, Kenny Pickett uh, in the gun. You're going to see a little gun play action. I really like the design here, but this is just cover two from the Bengals. Uh, probably a little bit of Tampa, too, if I had to say so myself. But this is just four verticals uh, from the Steelers and a really nice throw from Kenny Pickett. So when I say four verticals, that's exactly what it means. Uh, these two inside receivers are going to read the middle, uh, the middle field safeties if they divide. So if you get the middle field open look like they do right here, they're going to bend those seam routes towards the middle of the field. And Pickett lays a beautiful ball on Pat Fryermuth. So um, excellent throw here. I know play action and the middle of the field usage has definitely been a heavy topic that we've talked about, wanting to see more of. Just with the play action fake right here, you get the token. Um, the Tampa linebacker, number 55 right here in the middle of the field, he's opening to the strong side of the field. You can actually see Pickett peek him right here once he knows he's opened up that way. He realizes that he's going to have this throwing window over top the um, opposite linebacker. Beautiful ball in touch uh, in there and plenty of time uh, for Frymuth to secure this one, take a little bit of a bump, explosive play, and a big first down. So we talked about uh, leading up to the game that Frymuth had an excellent matchup, and they went to that matchup early and often. Awesome play. So like I said, in the post-game recap yesterday, I thought that this was Pickett's best game of the season, probably the best of his career, just because it felt um, felt very natural, felt very complete. Uh, with that being said, they did uh, collectively, and he himself individually left some plays um, out there on the field. So one of the things that Anarumo, uh, the Bengals defensive coordinator, likes is to do some drop eight stuff. So you'll see a little drop eight coverage, and that just means eight defenders dropping in coverage right here, uh, just flooding the passing lanes. Uh, the Steelers are running good old Hank, so it's just curl flat with the sit route um, in the middle of the field. Uh, this is definitely something that if you have watched the channel, y'all know how much the Steelers love Hank. Uh, usually Hank's read inside out, although Pickett will read it from time to time more as just a pick a side curl flat route. Um, this to me is a turn down. I think this ball needs to be thrown. Uh, a, it could be thrown with a little bit of anticipation, but if you watch Friar move number 88 in the slot, uh, working towards the middle of the field right here, he gets let go in the zone coverage, going to sit right at the sticks, and Pickett's looking his way and just checks it down. So some of these, uh, if I had to say one biggish, um, I guess, complaint that I have about Pickett so far uh, this season is a lot of the times when the Steelers are going with this max protection look, uh, so you get seven protectors. Obviously not great when you get a drop eight look. Um, but when you get max protection, you usually want to push the ball on the field. And, you know, it, there have been times, there were a couple times even in this game, where they got max protection and didn't push the ball down the field. And when there's no rush, um, I would like to see this ball ripped. You see his eyes are glued to number 88 right here. This is wide open. We only got one guy really in the screen. He has enough arm strength to make that throw and pick up the first down. Checks us down. Um, and these are just situations where you're putting the ball carrier, whoever you're checking it down to in tough positions because you got those zone defenders with eyes in the backfield. Uh, you're asking them to make multiple players miss for the first down. So I thought the Steelers should have went for it right here as well. That's just a side note. But overall, we move on. All right, so right here we get a third and short play. The Steelers have done some creative stuff uh, in these situations in recent weeks. Wanted to highlight this one just from a um, – a play uh, design standpoint, but last week um, against the Browns, I think they used Warren uh, kind of on this jet motion, got the two backs in the backfield. They used Warren, gave the ball to him, and he was able to get outside, pick up the first down. Uh, here you're going to see Pickett reverse out um, and then hit Warren in the flat. You can see what it does to the linebackers. Look at number 57 with his eyes in the backfield, but the jet motion has Mike Hilton following Jalen Warren over to the other side of the field. And you see he's at a leverage advantage right there. A good throw to move the sticks on third and short. Now, the Steelers did move the ball effectively, like I said, uh, over 400 yards for the first time since 2020 um, in their first game without Matt Canada as offensive coordinator. Uh, this is a familiar, a familiar play that they've ran in recent weeks. It's time to scrap this one. Um, one of my biggest complaints about the play action game, especially under center, is they will use play action uh, to set up screen passes and passes to the flat. I just don't – I just hate the philosophy. I hate the whole ideology of that. You can see Pickett's eyes right here. As soon as he play action fakes to Harris, he's getting his eyes on Hayward. They've thrown this to the flat I think three or four times in the last month. Defenses have clearly caught on to it. Mike Hilton was all over that. They force 
uh, pick it off his first read, and he ends up taking a sack. Now, just a couple things here. Uh, I think the second read in the progression here is probably Johnson on the out route, and you can definitely argue that he needs to rip this ball right there. He looks like he comes off it, and it's kind of starting to work towards this kind of mesh concept between – uh, Pickens and Friermuth over the middle of the field. That's a little sloppy in general. But right here, um, you don't really have time to go through your progressions as a quarterback because watch who Najee Harris is trying to block right here. He comes out, and he ends up diving at Trey Hendrickson. Anytime you get a running back on an edge rusher in um, pass protection, that's an advantage for the defense. Okay, So um, those plays are designed to get the ball out quickly because you don't want to put your running back in pass throw against their best pass rusher for that long. So those are just difficult plays, unfortunate sack, definitely, uh, you know, something I wish they would just move off on. We can throw this, uh, you know, play in the garbage, in my opinion. All right, so it was really nice to see Pickett and the Steelers offense actually use the middle of the field. First time in a while that we've seen something like this. Another third down completion, a big gain to Fryermuth, another explosive play. We'll run this kind of back and see what we get here. From the Bengals' standpoint, this looks like cover six to me. So you're going to get quarters uh, to the bottom of the screen, and you're going to get uh, cover two to the top of the screen. They're playing a little fist technique, uh, trailing Deontay Johnson, essentially a double team. Um, we've talked about the Steelers just in recent weeks. Over the course of the season, they get cover two coverage more than anyone else. And the reason for that is because they don't use really use the middle of the field, and they like clouding the Steelers' receivers so that they can keep them away from the go balls and the back shoulders and things like that that but another uh fryer Muth up the seam here you get the high low on that side as as well but i want to say that this is somewhat of a coverage bust from the Bengals as well because i think if we're talking about playing quarters to the bottom i'm pretty sure logan wilson needs to run with him uh but even um number 55 should be running with the tight end up the seam here but even then i like the anticipation from pickett giving his guy a shot once he gets even uh this is a mat a matchup that i'm glad that they took i mean anytime you can get uh, Friar Muth matched up one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. You know, he's not the best. I love that celebration. He's not the best blocker, uh, but he is a gifted receiver, and he needs to get reintegrated back into the offense. Uh, these type of matchups, this favors the Steelers. Uh, really nice pocket there from the offensive line and another beautiful ball uh, from Pickett. So wide open in the middle of the field, another explosive play. Like I said, let's go, man. I loved seeing the use of the middle of the field. It was a refreshing, refreshing sight. All right, so later in that drive, Steelers are trying to take a little bit of a shot down the field. They're going to get a play action, move the launch point a little bit. Um, this is pretty well covered from the Bengals. Uh, this is just straight up man-to-man. -man. We're going to get kind of double crosser, so we're going to get Deontay Johnson on the crossing route um, and then George Pickens on the dig. This is really good coverage uh, by the Bengals. You see neither, neither uh, receiver is able to create a ton of separation. You will see Pickett work back to his check down, which is also taken away. But this is kind of what I like. I like seeing him uh, kind of extend the play right here. And even though they don't pick up a first down or a completion, he's smart enough to know that this is going to be pass interference. We get the linebacker that doesn't look for the ball. He's not used to being in those situations. And we'll pick up the pass interference. So these are the types of plays that you like to see Pickett escape the pocket and move. Uh, to create a little bit of something on his own because that's something he's able to do. I also want to point out just the, uh, the fake and the protection aspect of it, okay? So you'll see Isaac Samalo pull here uh, once you get the play fake to Harris. These pulling guards in pass protection, uh, this is something that they did on the Frymouth completion to begin the uh, video as well. These are really good because the Steelers have been running a lot of like one-back power. So now that they're pulling the guards, uh, more in the run game, pulling the tackles more in the run game. If you can start to make some of the passing game stuff look similar, that's how you build off your concepts and you make defenses, uh, you know, have to play both sides, the pass and the run, and put those linebackers in conflict. So nice play here from Pickett, just ad-libbing. All right, this was a play that was widely discussed on social media during the game yesterday. Uh, this is the Deontay Johnson catch, no catch. Should Tomlin have challenged it? Was this a bad call? Was it a drop? I don't know. Uh, this is a frustrating one, though, because I think that this is a pretty good ball. Uh, so what are we working with here in the red zone? This is essentially just double post. This is something that I talk about a lot. This is one of my favorite red zone concepts uh, because it's really good against quarters, but it's also uh, useful against single high like this. Uh, basically, what this does, uh, you'll see Allen Robinson running this kind of um, post route to the middle of the field. The free safety right here, this is just cover three. Uh, he has a decision. Am I going to stick with Robinson in the slot, or am I going to have to work to the boundary uh, for Johnson coming uh, right behind him on the skinny post? 
Nice route and release, secondary release here by Johnson, giving a little A step to the outside, plenty of separation. Now, you could argue this ball should be gone earlier, and it is a touch late, but this is a good throw, man. This is a throw that I have not seen enough of from Kenny Pickett, just in terms of being willing to test tight windows and throw the ball into a little bit of traffic down the field. This is the stuff that we have been absolutely begging for. Um, and I will show you guys this from the tight as well. But really like the play design here. Um, but I think that this is a good throw, and this definitely deserved to be a touchdown. So I know a lot of people, uh, whether it be in the comments or on Twitter, have been coming at me about, like, oh, you said this was Pickett's best game of his career. Why is that? He didn't even throw a touchdown. Um, this should have been a touchdown. This is a good enough throw. This deserved to be a touchdown. You see what I'm talking about with the free safety. All you got to do is eye him. You keep him in the middle of the field. Let the post rip. Really nice throw. Um, even though it is a touch late, I actually like putting this ball on the back shoulder a little bit because if the safety does get a good break on it, you don't want to lead your receiver into heavy traffic. Uh, this is a good throw. And really, by the rule book, this should have been a catch. So officials kind of got this wrong. Again, I would like to see Mike Tomlin challenge this. He said that he didn't have a good viewpoint of it. Um, it just seems like somebody in the booth has to be able to give him some type of feedback uh, to challenge this play. But really unfortunate. Uh, this is why I said the Steelers played better uh, than the number of points that they put up. All right, so we talked about the Steelers just facing a ton of zone coverage, particularly cover two looks uh, this season. And the reason the Steelers don't see a ton of man-to-man -man is this right here. Man-to-man uh, -man is a matchup problem uh, against these Steelers wide receivers. Deontay Johnson, George Pickens are really tough covers one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and anytime you leave uh, those guys one-on-one -on -one without a safety over the top, Pickett has shown the ability uh, to make these type of go ball throws down the sideline, and he's shown just the willingness to test uh, the defense deep when you give him these advantageous looks. So just kind of go back to this just from a design standpoint. All this is is just shallow cross, and then on the backside you get Johnson on the go ball uh, fade up top. So this is kind of just a pre-snap look. We got the safety in the middle of the field. We're getting man coverage alignment here. Um, this is just an obvious, okay, we know we got man coverage. We're going to take our best receiver against a backup corner and DJ Turner. Now, DJ Turner up top is a really good player. Uh, he's going to be a good player, I think. Uh, runs really fast. I want to say he's like a 4-3-40 guy. But Johnson just cooks him with the release. Uh, does a good job playing physical throughout the route. You'll see the hand fighting here between these two. Uh, really nice ball from Pickett, too, to put it over his shoulder in stride. Uh, and then you get the lay hands from Deontay Johnson. We'll talk about another example of lay hands here in a little bit later in the video by George Pickens. But the corner, no shot here. Awesome play, another explosive down the field. This is something we've been wanting to see more from the Steelers. Push the ball down the field. They did that against Cincy. Awesome to watch. So the Bengals did some creative stuff on third down, just crowding the line of scrimmage. They showed some drop eight stuff. They brought some pressure. Did a good job mixing it up. Um, right here, Pickett's arm gets hit um, during the throw, so he's not able to get this one out. But we're going to get the crosser uh, against man coverage with Deontay Johnson. I, in my opinion, this is where the ball probably needs to go, uh, especially when you're thinking that you're hot and you don't have enough blockers for the amount of people they are going to bring. Uh, unfortunately, his arm just gets hit. So kind of show you guys the tight to um, explain kind of why this happened. Looks like Broderick Jones gets beat a little bit around the edge, but – they're crowding this line of scrimmage right here. They've got eight guys up. So, really, the tackle and the guard are really going to take the most dangerous guys. Um, so, 55 here is going to drop out to make it look like uh, he's coming. James Daniels has to keep his eyes on him. Once he realizes that he's dropping, he's going to take 94. But by that time, Dax Hill, who's a really fast, quick player, is coming off the edge. And just with his set, Broderick's not able to uh, – stay in front of him so you see his arm gets hit right there they had the little bonus dropper in the middle of the field with the defensive tackle um but yeah this is part of the reason the Steelers had to settle for some field goals just um execution good play calls uh from Luan Rumo um just unfortunate all right so another familiar uh play here a little four by one I uh, really like this one uh from Pickett just I think he does a good job coming off of Pickens really early here and finding the underneath check down uh, so what I mean by four by one, you're going to motion uh, Jalen Warren behind him, get a little running start. You're going to get a spacing concept to the bottom of the field. And then anytime the Steelers are in these four by one situations, it's usually George Pickens up at the top. Uh, Pickens has hit uh, some slants 
in this formation. He's also hit some back shoulders, some goal balls. Uh, but you see the Bengals are definitely ready for it. Watch the cornerback. He immediately is like, okay, I'm going to play low and inside. I've got safety help over the top. It looks like Pickens has a double move as well. But he's not going to be open right there. And you can see Pickett very efficiently work to the backside, get the ball to Darnell Washington on the little spot route underneath. Uh, this game probably had the feeling of um, just, I guess, rejoice or relief uh for Steelers fans because they did so much stuff that I feel like a lot of people have been complaining about the middle of the field uh you can also see uh them incorporating Darnell Washington into the passing game because he has been completely non-existent uh in that regard he did have a good touchdown as or a good block on the touchdown uh for Najee Harris as well but these are the types of things that he did at Georgia you get the ball to him underneath it's going to take a good two, three guys to bring him down because of his size. So uh, just nice, quick, easy play right there from Pickett. But I like seeing the easy stuff look easy. All right, so stuff that we've talked about in recent weeks uh, about Pickett and Deontay Johnson just not being on the same page. Uh, it happened a couple times in the Cleveland game we talked about. Uh, but here's another example of it right here. This is third and short. Uh, you'll see the hand signal uh, from Pickett here over to Johnson uh, in his direction. I'm not really exactly sure what this hand signal is, but I do have another example of him using it, uh, and it didn't work that time either. So uh, very confused here. I'm guessing that this is supposed to maybe be like a smash concept with uh, Johnson just running a quick hitch at the first down marker. You could tell Pickett is really throwing this outside as if he's just going to run a straight hitch uh, instead of coming in here and running more of like a spot. Um, but either way, neither one of them look like they're, um, you know, on the same page here. Again, a familiar look from the Bengals. Uh, this is another one of those drop eight coverages where they show a bunch of guys that line of scrimmage and then drop everybody out. But one of the things I will say, even if this is supposed to be a hitch at the marker, uh, the corner route from Pickens is going to make the spacing uh, look really weird at the bottom of the screen. So I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say whose fault it is, what this was supposed to be, but there's the hand signal right there. I'll show you guys uh, right there. Um, but I'll show you guys another example of it here in a little bit. But just another miscommunication. Um, like I said, man, they were so close, like little – details and little errors kept them from putting up like a good like 30 points in this game it's kind of infuriating honestly all right so next drive gonna motion uh pat fryermuth over here to the double side uh with george pickens really like this high low this high low shows up again uh later in the game this is just simple kind of stuff here motion and fryermuth nobody follows him good uh indicator that this is not going to be man coverage it's gonna be some type of zone uh they end up rotating in the Bengals do uh it's like cover three week uh, whatever you call that. And then Fryermuth going to kind of skip up a little bit, break out. You see he's at a leverage advantage. This is a nice read for Pickett, getting the ball out on time. And a good throw to hit him in stride like that to get a couple yards after the catch. Set yourself up for second and short. Um, a good ball from Pickett. Uh, you'll see, like I said, I'll show the another example here where they uh, hit the uh, dig route behind it or attempt to. Uh, but this is a good ball from Pickett. Uh, just, you know, staying on schedule. All right, so the Steelers did try a little bit more play action uh, to push the ball down the field, just weren't really successful with it. This one's a tough one uh, because I don't know that Pickett ever really looks at Calvin Austin down here, uh, but what we're doing is just getting a deep kind of pylon. Uh, this may, this route from Austin at the bottom of the screen may end up just being a clear out, uh, and he's not really in the progression aside from maybe an alert. But I do think if you throw this ball to the sideline uh, and can Pickett make this throw, I don't know. This would be a pretty awesome throw if he could. Uh, but I do think that some of the more alien quarterbacks, the Herberts, the Mahomes, probably do have the arm uh, to put this ball outside um, on Calvin's left shoulder and for a big play here. Uh, but really to me, uh, when they're moving the launch point, again, you get the pulling guard right there, Allen Robinson with the chip on the edge defender. It looks like uh, Pickett's trying to originally go to uh, Deontay Johnson on the high cross uh, but with the Tampa 2 defender dropping and locating him quickly was going to be tough now if we do get Tampa 2 though where does that open up holes in the defense so we get the middle linebacker the mic dropping to cover the crosser usually that is going to leave where he started on the play wide open you'll see Darnell Washington right there just sitting right across the ball wide open for probably five yards who knows how long he's able to drag whichever secondary defender gets there to him first in my opinion i would love to see kenny pickett just get there instead of automatically going to the check down of jalen warren 
five yards or whatever behind the line of scrimmage. And we've seen some of these frustrating plays, man, but it's really tough like when you're dropping the ball off to the back uh, in the backfield with these zone eyes, uh, the defenders having zone eyes, meaning they got their eyes in the backfield. It's going to be tough. And that's a heck of a tackle for Mike Hilton. We know that he can do that. Uh, but these are tough spots to put your back in. You know, you end up trying to call a play to take a shot down the field. You end up losing yards. It's tough. It's really tough. Like I said, when I did the video on the Canada firing or whatever, like the Steelers offense is going to mostly remain the same just because you can't install an entirely new offense, you know, in late November. It's just not possible. There's a reason that it takes all summer to do those things. Um, but just right here, uh, the Bengals are going to bring a little bit of pressure. we got a creeper pressure from the safety who comes uh, relatively unblocked, pickets under some duress. Um, this is like one of my biggest pet peeves, like with the Steelers um, in general, passing game over the past, you know, really decade, even before Canada, just so many static routes. And what I mean by static is, you know, we don't have really any motion. We've got no stacks, no bunches, nothing to create any type of leverage. Uh, we're just asking our receivers to go out there and win. And you're asking your fourth wide receiver at the bottom of the screen to go up against a starting cornerback and run a hitch or a curl route against off coverage. This is just not it. Just from a play calling standpoint, it's not it. And it looks like Austin doesn't even get all the way to the marker or isn't going to get the first down anyway. It's a bad play call. Don't put this one really on picket, although the throw is definitely not accurate itself. Um, but it is what it is. I will be very ready uh, to get a real offensive coordinator in here so that we can get some better stuff on third down. All right, so we get another uh, similar formation as we had a couple plays ago uh, on the completion of Fryermuth. Again, just really good chemistry between these two. Fryermuth working his way back from injury, getting him re-involved back into the offense. Career day for him as well. Um, really like this one. This is the same type of idea. Fryermuth is going to be working the option route. He has the um, basically the ability to sit down or break outside. He is reading both of those underneath defenders' leverage. Understands that he needs to sit down. Pickett works the backside to him and lays it on his face mask. Again, get forward, get some yards after the catch. Really like that. You see Deontay Johnson with the dig route right behind him on the high-low. Nice completion and another first down. All right, so the Steelers are in a little two-minute hurry up, using some tempo at the end of the half. It's just another simple completion to Fryermuth. Uh, this is something that they've ran for a long time. You get basically all hitches or curls, uh, and the outside receivers are running kind of uh, comebacks. Uh, but another play that just moves the moves the, moves the chain on first down. Uh, one thing that I noticed uh, on film, especially, is whenever the Bengals were rotating um, into some of their cover three stuff, the safety that was coming down was coming down really late. Uh, so it's a good job by uh, Fryermuth to just understand that the you know the hook defender is really late. He's not getting downhill enough. And fortunately, he slips, turns, gets the first down, drag a couple guys for another explosive play. Uh, nice job by Pickett to see it. And we get another first down out of it. All right, so I'm only putting this in the video so that I can show you guys the hand signal again. Uh, you'll see the hand signal, the same one as last time uh, to pick inside. Again, I told y'all this didn't work the second time they ran it either. It doesn't. Um, Pickett ends up pulling it down, uh, scrambles for a couple yards. Like I said, they're in the hurry up in this situation. Um, but here, another look at the hand signal. I will try to go back and see if I can find something for this, uh, but I don't recall ever seeing it. It does look like, you know, guys are not catching on to it or whatever it's supposed to be. But uh, he see he pulls it down, gets a couple yards on first down. But that's the only reason it's in the video. All right, so second and long here. This is right after a penalty on Broderick Jones for holding. Uh, knocks the offense kind of off schedule a little bit. In my opinion, this is, again, just kind of that hitches uh, kind of play call. The outside receivers are going to run a fade because they get cloud coverage against cover two. Uh, the Bengals are just trying to dare them to throw the ball underneath, which is what they do. Unfortunately here, though, um, James Daniels takes a massive L in pass protection, and Kenny ends up taking a pretty big shot. Um on this play. We'll kind of show you guys this one. I believe this is BJ Hill uh, for the Bengals. It's a really nice move here, rushing the passer. He kind of knocks Daniels off balance and then swims, a little arm over move. Uh, looks like Broderick gets beat a little bit there as well. But these are the types of shots that you don't want your quarterback taking. That's a helmet to the midsection and a really tough one uh, that uh, forces an incompletion on the play. 
after Pickett was hit on that second long, they ended up running a, a play to Warren just to basically end out the half. But uh, they're going to start the second half here with Jalen Warren on the running back screen. This is something that we've talked a lot about, just with them being extremely ineffective uh, in these spots. Uh, seemed like forever now, really, honestly. But I love getting the ball to Warren in the space right here. This is a nice little drive starter. Anytime you can get a first down on uh, on first down, uh, in an easy completion to pick it, you really like, you know, being able to dump this ball off for two, three yards and then end up with a 15-yard completion. Uh, nice job by Warren getting to the sideline and a nice uh, play call to get the drive started. All right, this is a tough one for me. Um, these type of inbreakers, man, I don't know what it is, but he has really struggled with these um, over the first two years here as the Steelers starting quarterback. Uh, so we get the same type of formation. Uh, we get the kind of nasty or condensed split by the receiver and Fryermuth working out uh, side. You see the little option because of the defenders uh, sitting on the inside right here. He's going to break out. Uh, they're just getting straight up, you know, it looks like three deep, two under. This is an excellent play call that has a chance to go a long way if you hit it. Uh, basically, it's just a high-low um, on this linebacker right here. Once the linebacker kind of expands, he's going to follow the eyes of the quarterback. Uh, I don't know what it is about not being able to hit these throws. I mean, there's some pressure, but I'm not even really sure he sees Hilton from the backside. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is definitely something to work on in the offseason. Um, regardless of which coordinator comes in, I think we all want to see some more slants, some more inbreakers, some more digs in general. Uh, but just in the limited time that we've seen Pickett be able to throw these balls, they haven't been accurate. And this is a good anticipatory throw. Like, you know that you're going to be able to throw this right behind the linebacker. And I don't know what it is about why this ball is so high. Um, it's just very perplexing to me. Like I said, it's been a thing for the past couple of years. They get caught in the blitz. This is an excellent play call. Um, but we just got to put this ball on it. And this ball doesn't really need to be thrown with any type of crazy velocity. You can see sometimes like when he throws in the middle of the field, it feels like he's almost – he's a guy that doesn't have great arm strength. So it almost feels like he's trying to overcompensate for that. But, man, this is – this is not a tight window. This is everything's open. I mean, you just look at how much space there is in the middle of the field. Uh, all you got to do is just hit him in the face mask, and this is going to be another explosive play. So uh, really tough one there, especially to ask your receiver to go in the air like that and make a crazy catch, especially when he's wide open. But that's probably the worst play of the game for Kenny, in my opinion, definitely the one that he wants back. But just the timing on those end breakers uh, with him and with the receivers has just been off. One of the things, too, uh, about the Steelers, they've actually ran some really nice bunch concepts this year. Uh, they just don't use them enough. Like I said, I hate the static nature of some of their third down play calls. This is a third and short, third and medium type. Uh, they are going to motion Calvin Austin into the bunch here. Um, going to get him at a leverage advantage. Uh, basically, this is just a variation of what I would call snag. So you're going to get um, Johnson coming underneath as the point man. He's going to run kind of a whip route or return, whatever you would call it. Uh, Austin here is going to run an out route, and then you're going to get the corner from Pickens. Uh, but this is a really good play call, especially against man-to-man, -man, which is what they end up getting. Uh, you're going to see all the receivers. Johnson has a leverage advantage, and so does Austin. Really nice job by Kenny. Uh, ball's a little bit thrown to the middle, but a, a nice route there from Austin using his speed to pick up the first down on third down. All right, so right here we get another third and two uh, against the Bengals. Talked a little bit about early in the video, Cincinnati was showing a lot of these uh, drop eight type of looks. Uh, they're going to get the same thing here, but this is what I like. Those in-game adjustments, the understanding of what you're going to be getting from a coverage perspective. Uh, really nice job here by Pickett, just realizing the hole in the zone. Uh, Frymouth kind of sits down in this open void right here. Pickett finds him right after the first down marker. Easy first down. So, um, so Anarumo got him a couple times in the first half with some of this drop eight stuff. But I really liked how, um, you know, they were able to kind of figure this out as the game went on. That was one of the biggest critiques I had with Canada. Uh, we heard Pickett say last week, you know, they expected more man, but they got a zone and they couldn't adjust. Well, this week I felt like they did adjust to some of the things um, – that the Bengals were trying to do. And like I said, even with this bonus dropper, uh, once that Mike linebacker starts to exit in that kind of Tampa or pole runner position, uh, Fryermuth does a good job just sitting over the middle of the field and a nice completion and a first down. All right, so this is a tough one. Uh, getting down near the red zone here, the Steelers finally have another drive going. Uh, unfortunately, Pickett sacked again. Overall, the offensive line did a very, very good job, I thought. Um, I think he was only pressured like seven or eight times, but this is definitely the ugliest rep 
uh, for Dan Moore Jr. and did a good job on Trey Hendrickson, but the rookie, Miles Murphy, ends up getting a sack here. Uh, the Bengals are playing kind of what I would say is a quarters uh, shell. I think Pickett right here is wanting to either throw this kind of comeback or maybe Austin in the middle of the field. Uh, but the safety is going to end up being able to nail down on this route fairly easily. You can see what that looks like at the top of the screen against Fryermuth as well. Deontay Johnson does a good job creating separation, uh, but, you know, that's not the side of the field that Pickett was working. So just kind of show you guys uh, a little bit from the tight as well. Really nice uh, stab. Uh, club rip move from Murphy uh, really nice rookie out of Clemson but you guys can kind of see uh, him hitch up in the pocket right here he tries to escape but uh, really nice rush there from the Bengals all right so another play out of the gun here uh, Cincinnati is going to be running cover two uh, this play really nice ad lib again by Pickett something that I've noticed just over the years and watching him like studying him coming out of college and then just so far watching you know every throw that he's made as a Steeler you know two three four times um, on a weekly basis I just feel like when he gets out of the pocket uh, he actually is more accurate I feel like on the run than he is actually in the pocket uh, I think he's got modest accuracy in the pocket but I really feel like whenever he's rolling left rolling to his right uh, it seems like his accuracy actually improves this is a really nice job here uh, by George Pickens too the corner kind of loses sight of him he gets in that corner's blind spot he understands that Pickett is rolling out does a good job making himself quarterback friendly, comes back to the ball, another first down. Nice play there. I really thought that the uh, the play calling on third down did a really good job um, just giving Kenny Pickett some easy answers. And you see the motion to the stack right here. This is a formation they had a ton of success with. I promise, guys, like, it doesn't always have to be this hard to pass the football. Like, it can be this easy, okay? You get the motion to the stack. Uh, but just watch George Pickens here. He's just going to run in a straight line. And basically all this does is create a rub because that inside corner, the slot, is going to have to work over top of him uh, to get to Fryermuth on the out route at the sticks. And that's nearly impossible to do. Pickett does a good job. All his cleats in the ground, driving the ball to the sideline with another accurate throw in stride. So, um, like I said, man, there are better options uh, to beat man coverage than some of the stuff that we've seen from the Steelers in recent years with the hitches and the go balls and stuff like that. Like, these are easy chain-moving solutions. Uh, and definitely something I want to see more of as the season moves. Along. All right, so the Steelers would score a touchdown. Najee Harris ran one into the end zone just a couple of plays later. Uh, but this is a really, really close call, man. They were so close to having another explosive right here. Pickett's going to take the one-on-one -on, -one on the backside of George Pickens. Uh, this one's tough uh, because Pickens does slow down just a little bit. Uh, you get middle field close coverage. He slows down here because I think he's anticipating that Pickett probably wants to throw him a back shoulder once they're even right here. But the ball is out so quickly, uh, potentially because of um, this inside rush from the edge defender kind of beats Dan Moore. So maybe he feels like he needs to get this ball off a little bit earlier than normal. Uh, but right here, I think Pickett is or Pickens is thinking that he's going to get a back shoulder. You can see him kind of slow up and then have to go full speed again to lay out. Um, for the deep ball. So I'll kind of show this again, but a nice release from Pickens to uh, win outside, uh, but just really close. Like I said, man, they were so, so close to getting, you know, I feel like 30 points on the board. Uh, it's just a matter of three, four plays, just being a little bit tighter on the execution aspect of it. Um, and I feel like they're, they were knocking on the doorstep of it. All right, see, third and long here. You guys know I love me some empty, man. Love me some empty. I think it gives the quarterbacks a lot of answers pre-snap. Uh, this one's pretty obvious, right? We get middle field closed. This is just straight up cover one. This is just a matchup thing. Take your best matchup, go down the field. Uh, this concept is actually called shock. Uh, this is something that the Saints ran with Sean Payton and Drew Brees for a million years. We've gone over this on the channel before, uh, but really like the play call here, especially in this situation, because you got matchups all over the board. And I love taking this matchup with Mike Hilton on George Pickens, because you got a major, major size and speed mismatch out there on the slot. Love uh, moving Pickens around, getting him some opportunities down the field to work his magic. Uh, this is a really good throw, man. This is a freaking dime uh, by Kenny Pickett to put this over his left shoulder. Um, and we'll just talk about it a little bit from a conceptual standpoint as well. Really what shock is, is the number three receiver, Deontay Johnson. Uh, he's going to kind of run a little 
little option or juke or whip route uh, underneath can be any of those things. And then you're going to get a slot fade uh, from the number two. And then the outside receiver is usually running some type of hitch working back to the uh, quarterback. So uh, excellent route here from Pickens to create some separation, a little skip off the line. But this is an awesome, awesome throw from Kenny Pickett. Uh, one of the best of the season, if not the best, I feel like. Um, I'm going to kind of show you guys this from the tight as well. Um, you know, he identifies the matchup really quickly. All he's got to do is keep track of that uh, center fielder, keep him in the middle of the field, let that ball go. Also want to do a quick shout out because I just realized I haven't uh, throughout the whole video. Offensive line, again, and pass protection, very good on the day. This is a perfect pocket on third and long, exactly what the stuff that you want to see. Um, but I'll kind of slow this down. When we talk about late hands, uh, I talked about this in the post game. This is what late hands means. This is the awesome, awesome stuff that I feel like you're already seeing from a receiver in year two. Does a good job. Really what matters here is not extending his hands too early to let the DB know that the ball is coming. Uh, and right here, Hilton doesn't even know the ball is coming his way. Uh, this is awesome from George Pickens. This is the type of stuff that you see all the time from Devontae Adams. Uh, but this is an awesome, awesome throw right in stride over his shoulder. Look at Calvin Austin in the background. It's funny. Uh, he's got both of his hands up. He knows what it is. Uh, awesome throw, awesome catch. Heck of a drive. All right, so third and long here, third and nine. Uh, the Bengals are showing pressure. You see it almost looks like a punt return uh, type of look uh, at the line of scrimmage. They do drop one guy out, but this is just straight up cover zero. Uh, one of the best ways to beat cover zero just throw to your best receiver because she's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. And that's really where uh, Kenny Pickett goes here. Just a really nice job identifying these guys get the ball out quick, uh, throwing to Deontay Johnson. Now, I will say this ball is not a good football. Uh, just from an accuracy standpoint, this is uh, a bit of a bailout from Johnson. Uh, maybe he owed him a little bit from uh, earlier in the game. But he does a good job identifying the matchup, getting the ball out. But, dude, I cannot believe my Twitter timeline did not give this catch nearly enough credit in real time. This is an awesome grab. Because I think people don't really understand, like, how difficult this is because it's man coverage. He's running a crossing route full speed, and he literally digs this ball up quite literally off the turf. I mean, dude, I mean, that's off his shoelaces. That's a awesome, awesome catch. Um and that's what you got to do, especially because I feel like there were times in this game where they were able to kind of expose Mike Hilton in coverage. Uh, we'll show another example here in a second. Uh, but just an excellent catch there. Awesome big play, third down and long conversion. Let's go. All right, so red zone execution, definitely something that could have been better um, on Sunday in this game. Uh, the Steelers are just going to get a cover three look from the Bengals, uh, get Dante Johnson uh, down at the bottom of the screen, just running a outbreaking route. Um, this one's kind of tough for me because originally I thought that this throw was late when I saw it live just by the reaction of the corner, uh, just how the play unfolded down the field. Uh, but this one's tough because Johnson, you see him extend that right arm a little bit to create some separation. Once he does that, though, the defender does a really good job of grabbing it. So that's one of the phrases that we use in the DB room. Uh, you push, I pull type of thing. Um, and it actually puts the defender back in pretty good uh like better uh, situation than he was previously in. So it kind of works against Johnson here. But Pickett does throw this ball uh, with anticipation. You see his arms already separated right here. Johnson doesn't even have his head turned. Uh, but in my opinion, he just misses this throw. Like it's not – Johnson, of course, wants the flag. Uh, but I think that's one that you definitely want to play on, uh, you know, keep the refs out of the game. But uh, another drop back here. But you see all the cleats in the ground and just rips it. But I think the ball placement here is just not good enough. You want to throw this ball to the sideline or to the pylon. He kind of leaves this on the inside, which allows the defender to kind of uh, get his hand on it and forces Johnson to work back through contact. Again, just want to put that one on the sideline. But like I said, man, they were really close on a number of these different plays, especially in the red zone. Uh, three or four plays could have gone a different way. Uh, from an execution standpoint, they would have put up 30 points. But – this is actually the last play of the breakdown. Uh, he only threw like two passes after this. One of them was a flat route, uh, off play action, a little slide concept, and then a check down. Uh, but as far as just things um, I was encouraged by, I just felt like Kenny Pickett looked comfortable and confident. Those are the two things that I wanted to see above all else. Um, of course, you want to see more points and, you know, the statistics, all that 300 yards, maybe you want to see that kind of stuff. But I just thought from the jump he looked confident and comfortable 
Um, and really, man, like I said this on Twitter too, but I don't really feel like there was a ton of schematic change. I just thought the execution was better all around from the receivers, from the quarterback especially. Um, of course, we know the run game has been humming. So it's nice to see things come together. Um, I do want to continue to see more stacks, more bunches, better man answers, a less static offense. Um, I like some of the st stuff they're trying to do with throwing the ball down the field, especially in the middle of the field. All that stuff definitely needs to stay. Um, but the Steelers offense has talent, man. They're, they're a lot better than what they've shown so far this season. Um, of course, I would love to see some under center play action stuff um, as well. Uh, but maybe baby steps. Maybe we'll get that here in the weeks coming. So, But I appreciate you guys watching the video um, and sticking around with me. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications. Like the video. All that stuff. And I will holler at you guys next time. Peace and love.